Hello, and welcome to week number 16, pre-college math. We only have one week after this. We're going to start a short unit on probability um, this week. Um, and the first thing we're going to talk about is the counting principles. So our objectives for this week are to solve simple counting problems, use the fundamental counting principle to solve counting problems, use permutations to solve counting problems, and use combinations to solve counting problems. The fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle says that let E1 and E2 be two events. The first event, E1, can occur in M different ways. After E1 has occurred, E2 can occur in M2 different ways. The number of ways that two events can occur is M1 times M2. It kind of makes my head spin. What does that mean? Let's say we have a dice and a coin. Okay, um, so let me put my marker out here. So here's our dice. Um, there are six sides to a dice, so you could end up being a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So there's six different ways that this thing can happen. And a coin has two different ways. It could end up being a head or a tail. So if I wanted to know all the different combinations that there could be here, the fundamental counting principle just says, if I just take the number of ways that the first event can happen and the number of ways the second event can happen, there are 12 different combinations of ways that this could happen. And I could write them all out. I could get a one head, one tail, two heads, two tails, three heads, three tails. I could get a four and a head, a four and a tail, a five and a head, five and a tail, six and a head, six and a tail. There's 12 different combinations there of ways that I could, that this could end up, okay? So the fundamental counting principle just says that all we have to do is multiply the total number of items in each event, and that will tell us the total sample space that the probability could have. And finding the sample space is pretty important. Uh, for example, if I asked you to find the probability of spinning, if I toss two dice, probability of getting a seven, a, to, a sum of seven. Well, if I knew how many um, rolls there would be, so if I toss two dice, guess what? There's gonna be six times six or 36 different outcomes. Now all I have to do is think about, well, how many different ways could it end up being a seven? Well, you could get a six and a one or a one and a six, those would add up to seven. So there's two ways when I toss two dice that I could end up with this. So the probability would be two out of 36, or I could reduce it to one out of 18. We're not talking about probability today. All we're talking about is sample space. So there would be 36 different outcomes that could happen if I tossed two dice. How many different pairs of letters from the English alphabet are possible? So what they're asking for is if I got an A and an A, or an A and a B, or a B and a D, how many different combinations are there? Different pairs. Well, guess what? There's 26 letters in the alphabet, so I would just multiply 26 times 26. There would be 676 different combinations, or there'd be 676 um, items in our sample space. That would be a lot to work out. I would definitely not want to work that out. At a high school cafeteria, diners can choose one vegetable from a choice of five, one meat from a choice of two meats, one serving of bread from two breads, and a dessert from among three desserts. How many meal configurations are possible if you have one of each? So I just take five vegetables, five choices. I'm gonna have one of them. Then I have two different choices for meats, two different choices for breads, and I have three different choices of my desserts. Five times two is 10 times two is 20 times three is 60. There would be 60 different combinations I could make there. There are 13 patients in Dr. Ziegler's waiting room. Dr. Ziegler can see five patients before lunch. In how many different orders can Dr. Ziegler see five of his patients before lunch? I'm not sure. So. If I'm, if I'm looking at this, if 
five different patients. How many patients could he choose from there? Well, he could have 13 different choices times, and then he would have, since he saw one person, there'd only be 14 choices here, 12, oh, I guess I'm going, I guess I don't know how to count, <laughs> 12 choices here, 11 choices here, 10 choices here, and nine choices here. So if I just did 13 times 12, and let me get my calculator out here, um, that should be the number of ways you could see. So 13 times 12 times 11 times 10. Ah, cheap old calculator here, uh, times nine. And I end up with 154,440 different ways that he could see those patients. Permutations. One important application of the fundamental counting principle is in determining the number of ways that n elements can be arranged in some sort of order. An order an ordering of n elements is called a permutation of elements. Definition of permutation. A permutation of n different elements is an order ordering of the elements such that one element is first, one is second, one is third, and so on. How many permutations of the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F are possible? So when we think about this, we have to consider the following reasoning. First position, any of the six letters. Any of the six letters could go in the first spot. So when I do a problem like this, I always, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six different things there, just like that last problem that we just did. So how many letters could go here? Well, six different letters. I have six choices. How many can go here? Well, I already used one of the um, choices, so that would be five. Then there would be only four letters left, then three, then two, then one. So if I multiply that all together, that gives me the permutations. How many different ways can this happen? And so multiply it out, we get 720. Number of permutations is just n factorial. However, sometimes we want to find a subset. For example, we might have six letters, but we only we want to arrange them in uh, subsets of two. So we have six letters, but we only want to do two different choices. So I might have A, B, C, D, E, F, and then it's like, okay, so A, B is one choice. I could have A, C, a, D, uh, sorry about that, uh, um, A, E, A, F. And then I could go down here and I could see say B, A. Now, is A, B and B, A different, okay? And what this really gets down to the point is order does matter. And in permutations, order matters. So this is different. Now, when we get to combinations, we'll talk about order doesn't matter. So A, B, and B, A are basically the same thing because the order doesn't make a difference there. But in permutations, order does matter. So we would have to count B, A as one of them. So in this problem that I'm dealing with, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. This is how we would write the problem out. We would write um, six permutate two, meaning that we have six um, values, but we want to put them in orders of two. Now, our calculator, or your calculator, probably has a permutation button. Um, if it doesn't, you can use the Desmos calculator, and I will show you how to use the Desmos calculator right now. So if we go to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into my Desmos calculator, and I'm going to show you. Oh, I did it the wrong way here. Okay, so here's my Desmos calculator. Let me get rid of this stuff. And it has a permutation button. It's right down here in functions. I gotta make sure you guys are seeing this. Okay, so it's down here in functions. I go to stats and I hit NPR. Now, in order to put this in here, you have to put the first number comma the second number. So in this problem, we had six comma two. We had six total item in, six total items in our 
um, sample space, we want to arrange them in two different orders, in, two, in twos. So there would be 30 different combinations there, or permutations, I should say, for that problem. So the Desmos calculator is amazing. It will help you um, with your assignment this week. Most definitely, I will be able to tell who watched the um, assessment and, or who watched this and, and who didn't, because the people that have to use the formula will have a little bit tougher of a time. Okay, so let me get back to my slides here. All right, so we're down to, we did permutations here. Okay, so we did that. All right, so um, number of permutations of an element. We did that slide already. Here's the formula for permutation. So it's n factorial over n minus r factorial. So I just had that problem uh, that I showed you how to do on the, or on the calculator. We had six permutate two. So let's see if the formula works. What is n factorial? What's an, a factorial? We already talked about this, but if I had something like four factorial, that really means four times three times two times one. So in this problem, I would have six factorial over n minus r. So six minus two, that's four factorial. So six factorial, six times five times four times three times two times one. Four factorial is four times three times two times one. That all crosses out. I'm left with six times five, which is 30. Ah, that's exactly the same answer that I came up with with the Desmos presentation. Awesome. All right. So the Desmos calculator, if you have a permutation or a combination, you don't need to use this formula. You can just go to the calculator and it will calculate those numbers out for you. So remember that for permutations, order is important. So to find the possible permutations of the letters A, B, C, and D, taken three at a time, okay? So there are four choices here. So if I was gonna write this out, this would be four permutate three. And I could use the formula um, that we just learned. So that would be four factorial over four minus three. Well, four minus three is one factorial. So my answer would be four times three times two times one or 24 would be, there would be 24 different ways that you could arrange four letters with three taken at a time. And order does matter. Okay. Combinations. Combinations are when order doesn't matter. I used to go to my class when I used to teach face-to-face -face and I, the, the example I used to use is um, I, if you go to Pizza Hut, and you order a pizza um, and you say, okay, I, I want ham, um, green peppers, and onions on it. Okay. And then it's like, oh, oh well, you know, after about five minutes, you decide oh, that's not the pizza you wanted. And you, you told the guy and he said, okay, I don't want this. I want green peppers, ham, and onions. Are those the same pizzas? And the answer is yes. Order doesn't matter here. It doesn't matter if they put ham, green peppers, and onions on, or green peppers, ham, and onions. You're going to get the same pizza. So order does not matter. So when we when we take something like A, B, C, D, and we want to put them in two different uh, order them two different ways, if I wrote down A, B, and B, D, or I'm sorry, A, B, and B, A. Those are the exact same thing. Order doesn't matter, so you wouldn't count those twice. Permutations, we would count them twice because they, the order does matter. So that's the difference. So combinations, your answers usually are much smaller because all of the repeats are gone. And that's basically what I just talked about here, okay? So you would count only one of the two sets in how many different ways can three letters be chosen from the letters A, B, C, D, and E? The order of three letters is not important, okay? So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So this problem would be a five combination three. And I could go to my calculator and I could work this out. The following subset represents a different combination. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So they're telling me that five choose three, there would be 10 um, solutions. Now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna take you guys to my decimals calculator this time, but I'm just gonna, 
I'm going to plug that in and see if that does work. So combination, you just use the NCR this time. And that was five choose three. I'm going to plug in five comma three here. And I end up with 10. So 10 is correct. So Desmos does have a combination button also. From this list, you can conclude, conclude that there are 10 different ways that three letters can be chosen from five letters. So now the formula for combinations is this one. And it's very similar to the permutations, right? This is the permutation one, but then you have this R factorial down at the bottom. What does that do? What does the R factorial do? Well, guess what? It divides out all of the repeats. That's what the R factorial does. So if I was going to, let's say we had five combination three, right? So this would be five factorial over five minus three, so that's two factorial, times R factorial, so that would be three factorial. So this would be, if I was going to work it out, this is what I'd have. So I on top, I have five times four times three times two times one. On bottom, I have a three times two times one, and I also have two times one. Okay, so this is going to cross out. So I have five times four on top, and on the bottom I have two times one, which is two, so that's 20 over two, or 10. It does work. So you can use the formula if you want, or you can just jump into Desmos and just plug your values in. Okay, and this is how they worked it out. When solving problems involving counting principles, you need to be able to distinguish among the various counting principles in order to determine which is necessary to solve the problem correctly. To do this, ask yourself the following questions. Is the order of the elements important? If it is, so permutation. Are the chosen elements a subset of a larger set in which order is not important? That is a combination. Okay. Does the problem involve two or more separate events? Well, it's just a fundamental counting principle. So let's take a look at a problem off our um, homework this week. It says the combination lock will open when the right choice of three numbers from one to 35 is selected, how many different combinations are possible? So the first thing I do is I, I ask myself, okay, if I had a combination two, three, 10, is that the same as 10, three, two? No, in this problem, order matters. The order matters. Two, three, 10 is not the same thing as 10, three, two. So I know I'm dealing with a permutation. I have 35 total, and I'm choosing three possibilities. So I'm just going to go to Desmos. I'm going to plug in 35 permutate three. Okay, so I'm going to do that because I can't read that number there. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to, let's go back here, get rid of that, get rid of that permutations. Um, 35, um, oops, I'm a three. And I get 39,270. So I'm going to go with letter C. 39,270 should be the correct answer. It's a permutation. Nine weightlifters are competing in the deadlift competition. In how many ways can the weightlifters finish first, second, and third? Okay, so I just do this. I say, okay, Jim, Bill, and Sam. First, second, third. Is that different? Then Sam, Bill, and Jim, first, second, and third? Oh, absolutely. Jim, which I am, is always wants to be first. So this is different than this. So order does matter. So in this problem, I'm just going to go nine, because there's nine weightlifters, permutate, and there's three um, choices, first place, second place, and third place. So nine, permutate three. So I'm jumping back into Desmos, nine, permutate three, and I get 504 different ways that they could win. All right, that was week number 16. We only have one week to go. I'm so excited. You guys have a great week. Bye.